YouTube. Um, it's been it's been a while. I've been busy with a lot of things, but uh, I'm gonna get right down to it. Um, what I want to talk about today is something that I feel is very important, and I believe I've told you guys before that I wanted to talk about this. Um, I just did a video and it turned out really crappy on the camera I was using. So I'm redoing it. Um, I want to talk about uh, stress in your bluegill or new tank syndrome. Sorry to yell at my dogs. Anyway, um, new tank syndrome and, and your bluegill. Again, I'm going to yell at my dogs for a second. All right. So, yes, news tank syndrome and your bluegills. That leads to, a.k.a. stress, um, disease, and death. So, what I did is I printed out this picture. Um, I found it on the internet. It's doesn't even really look like a bluegill here in Michigan. But um, what I wanted to point out to you guys was signs to look for from this picture. You see the pelvic? The pelvic fin right there on the bottom. That is one thing to pay attention to. Also the stomach. And uh, on the next picture, I'll show you that I, I, I drew um, this picture. Just copied off of that one, really. Um, I drew this, and you see how his pelvic fin is clamped to the body? You know that's that little dent in his stomach? First, I'll explain the pelvic fin. When it's clamped like that to the body at all times, and he's kind of just chilling out in the bottom of your tank, or the top of your tank in the corner mainly, um, he's stressed out, for sure. Um, even a healthy fish will you know, have this up when he's swimming, obviously. But when he's like just chilling there, he should have it uh, down and he should be happy, you know. Um, and then the end in the stomach is a possible internal parasite that I've learned about uh, while having these fish. So uh, those are a couple of things to pay attention to if you have the lake fish. Um, another thing is... When you get new tank syndrome, the fish will uh, appear kind of out of it, really out of it. They'll be hit, not only they'll be hiding in the corners, but uh, they'll have a loss of color, as in they'll kind of seem very like dull. You know, uh, usually a fish under proper lighting is gonna you know look nice and colorful, bright. Um, but look for that. And then obviously, the number one thing is like, what's the problem here? is uh not eating um maybe he might be afraid to come out because i do have one under you know these rocks that just it's a little green sunfish i mean i've got him i got him a while ago and he's not grown very much he has uh fin fin rot and he is just not eating he's afraid to come out and he won't eat so he's pretty much killing himself slowly i'm trying to do something I'm I want to get another tank running um, just to put him in like a little tin gallon because that's fine. Um, and I think I said it before on one of my first videos is observe your, uh, observe your sunfish, your bluegill, whatever you want to call them. Observe them daily to see how their behavior is. And to notice their normal behaviors, their daily behavior. And uh, if they are sick, stressed, you can, you'll be able to determine that and see something's up, something's not right. Um, so it's very important to pay attention to that. Um, now I'm going to go on to properly cycling your tank because I've seen some videos on, on YouTube um, to where people, they're... Setting up tanks, letting them run for about three to four days, and then adding fish. Not like adding one. They're adding several, which is a big no-no. Because, first of all, if you're going to set up a new tank, and 
you're gonna do like a, a test of water the next day. You're not gonna have no uh, readings of of any kind because a you don't have no fish in there. B there's no rotting food. C there's no fish poop obviously because you don't have no fish in there. So to generally get this process started started, you're gonna need uh, one or two things I could say. You're gonna need a a hardy beginner fish. Um, such as comet goldfish, some kind of goldfish, any kind of goldfish, or your feeder um, minnows. Now, be careful when you do get your feeder minnows from pet stores or whatever supplier because um, you want to observe how the other fish are. If there's a lot of dead fish in there, how crammed are they? You know, do they look pretty, you know, alive and well? Um, if I go to uh, my fish, you know, the store down the down the road, and I see their fish kind of looking slow swimmers, uh, kind of just sitting there looking just half dead. There's no way in hell I'm going to buy from them because of the fact that that fish, I can, uh, I'm going to risk one fish infecting my entire tank. It's not worth it. Uh, actually, I went to PetSmart. Bad place, first of all. That. I, uh, you know, to get fish at. But I was just there yesterday and I wasn't planning on buying any, but I walked by and they just had got a new shipment of uh, rosies. And they were really, really, really like energetic, swimming around, small, healthy, look very healthy. So, of course, I got some. Um, now, if you let them sit there in that tank, I'm sure they don't take care of it well. They're going to eventually get stressed, um, they're going to get crammed, and they're going to start to get sick. So, um, when you set up a tank, you can use the fish or you can use uh, chemicals. They do have bacteria chemicals where you can speed up your process, your cycle. Um, as you introduce fish, you want to probably get like a couple. A couple of beginner fish, let them start their ammonia. And the ammonia will uh, turn into nitrite. And the bacteria will start to develop because to get proper bacteria, you're going to want to uh, have your tank well oxygen, you know, um, circulating. You want that water circulating. You want oxygen getting in there. You want uh, um, like, kind of like a, and like a waterfall type of basis from a filter that is putting um, fresh oxygen in the water. Um, and then you can have a bubbler. So. Those are a couple of good things to have to get that oxygen pretty high to where your bacteria can thrive off that and, and help your tank uh, cycle a lot faster. Um, and then once that gets going, your nitrates and stuff are going to start uh, building up. Usually your first two weeks, your ammonia levels are going to start to rise. And then from two to four weeks, your nitrate is going to take off. Um, and then generally at your fourth week, you're going to have nitrates still uh, in the tank. And then you're going to start producing nitrates because the nitrites will eat the ammonia. The bacteria eats the ammonia and then turns into nitrates, which is good for your tank. That's what you want. Um, and when you have no levels of nitrites um, and you have like uh, showing nothing but like nitrates, good level of nitrates in your water test, you know, um, then you know that your tank is properly cycled and you are ready to add fish. But be cautious because when you add fish, you're going to want to add them slowly. Um, and if you're going to have native fish like I have, it's best to catch them when they're young. Um, generally to do that, I'm talking where they're small enough to not even like be caught on a on a hook. You're gonna have to net them or trap them. That's the best way to do it because of the fact that they um, adapt very well to their uh, living conditions. And when you do set up a tank, make sure you're somewhat resembling where they came from. For example, you want gravel, sand. I've seen sand. Um, driftwood, and plants. I mean, there is not much in a lake other than that. Uh, 
obviously uh, a lot of bugs. Um, you know, the tree stumps resemble the driftwood resemble like the tree branches, stumps, or whatever else. Um, kind of like you know, when I have rocks, driftwood, gravel. Um, so I'm going to actually plant some live plants in here. Hopefully, my fish don't uh, tear it up. But uh, this video is getting quite, quite long now. So anyway. When that happens, when you're cycled, then you can start slowly introducing your fish. Uh, again, with these guys, you're going to want to have a good filtration system. Um, you're going to want to have a dark spot. Like, you see how my light cut off right there? They got their dark spot. They like to hang out there. Obviously, you can tell. Um, they really don't like the light. Bluegill naturally will hang out in the dark spots during the midday at, in a lake. And then when it starts, the sun starts to go down, then they will start to move in the shallows and feed. That's just how they are. Um, but guys, if you have any questions, please, um, ask away. I, I again, I apologize to Steven. Uh, I left him hanging for three weeks. Uh, again, I apologize for that, but, uh, I'll be sure to check it like every other day. And, um, I appreciate any input, uh, again, questions, um, subscribing, appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to say, Oh, please come subscribe. Da, 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 da. Uh, and again, I have these fish bags. They're six by twelve. They look just like this. They're plastic fish bags. You're transporting smaller fish, uh, bait, whatever you want to do. I got a thousand of them. A thousand per box. And on Amazon, they sell for forty dollars. If you guys want, um, we can set something up to where I can um, ship one out to you guys. Twenty dollars, including shipping. So uh, let me guys, let me know if you guys want any boxes. I got like twelve boxes, so. Um, let me know guys and thanks again. Take it easy.